You know, one of the most startling discoveries I've made in the past three years is how popular Filipino food is in the United States. So, just to give you an idea, I have a much easier time selling tickets to my pop-up dinners in the U.S. than I do here in Manila. So, I average about 50 diners for every pop-up dinner in the U.S. Here in Manila, I average 25 to 30. So that's how mainstream Filipino food is in the U.S. Now, Filipino food has been ignored for so long that when it finally ascended into the world consciousness, we are now being bombarded by questions like, what is authentic Filipino food? And then we have all of these debates about, oh, this dish is more authentic Filipino than this dish. Or for it to be an authentic Filipino dish, it has to have this, this, and this. Well, to answer all of these debates and to answer all of these questions, this is my answer. There is no one standard authentic recipe of any Filipino dish. There is no standard authentic recipe of adobo. There is no standard authentic recipe of sinigang. There is no standard authentic recipe of kinilaw. And the answer actually lies in Filipino culture. So, a few years ago, and as you can see, many, many pounds ago, um, I was invited to do a cooking demo and a talk in Osami City, in uh, Tedesal University. And as you can see, it's a very beautiful province. And when I got there, I wanted to pay tribute to my host and my host city. So I had a student tour guide with me. I think she was about 19 years old. And I asked her, Okay, what is the signature authentic Osamis recipe? I want to cook my version of it as a tribute to the host. And her face was one of puzzlement. Like she did not seem to understand my question. Like she didn't seem to understand how there could be one standard dish to represent the entire province. And so I changed my question. I said, okay, what do you like to eat at home? And that's what I'm going to cook. And again, it took her a little bit of time to answer me. And finally, she answered, whatever ingredients my mom can find in the backyard, she's going to cook that, and that's what we eat at home. And that answer, ladies and gentlemen, from a 19-year-old tour guide was the one reminder I needed to be reminded of the greatest lessons I've learned eating and cooking Filipino food for over a decade. So the first thing you want to remember is that Filipino dish, Filipino dishes are named after techniques. We have no specific dishes. Okay? Right now, think about your favorite Filipino dish. Adobo is to stew in vinegar, peppercorns, and bay leaf. Sinigang is to cook in a soup that is soured by a sour fruit. Uh, kinilaw is to marinate in vinegar. Inihaw means to grill. Okay? So what this means is that our dishes are named this way because Filipino cuisine allows for substitutions. Historically speaking, Filipinos are an agricultural and fishing people. That means that a lot of what we eat depends solely on what we can grow, what we can harvest, and what we can catch. And when you allow for substitutions, then you make room for calamities, disasters, poor harvests, and it allows our people to enjoy our favorite dishes regardless of weather conditions, regardless of season. And the best thing about this is when you allow for substitutions, you encourage people to eat using local and seasonal ingredients at the peak of their freshness. How fresh? Sometimes literally in our backyard. Now, what this means is that if you were, for example, living in a seaside village, then it would make sense for your adobo to have squid, milkfish, instead of, say, pork. Or when you are decided on really making a kinilaw today, and you go to the market and the fish is not as fresh, then why don't you go ahead and use some shrimp? It's totally fine. If you really think about it, that great Filipino trait of making do 
with what we have, making the best of a situation, being adaptable. That is best represented in our food. Now, let's say for the sake of argument that my entire five minutes of talk right now makes no sense to you and you force me to agree to a certain set of ingredients to make one dish. Okay, so let's say we all agree that this dish has the same ingredients. Even then, the taste of that dish will be different because it entirely depends on who's eating it. Because we have what I like to call the Sausawan culture. But by Sausawan, I mean dips, condiments. Okay? We are encouraged to eat our Filipino food with Sausawan. A combination of calamansi, soy sauce, vinegar, buro, uh, shrimp paste, fish sauce, achara, banana ketchup, lechon sauce. Okay? All of these things. And what this means is that when we eat our dish, we can create a Sausawan to change the flavor of that dish. Meaning, Filipino food is customizable. So, we want our guests to feel welcome at our table. And that's why even if our dish is perfectly seasoned, we still encourage them to create a sausawa and change the flavor of the dish. Oh, you like your dish a little bit more sweet? You like your dish a little bit more sour? You like a little bit of fishy taste? Then go ahead and add a sausawa to my dish, I won't feel insulted. And by allowing this, we are making sure that our guests have the best possible time at our table. So if you really think about it, that endearing Filipino quality of being gracious hosts is best exemplified by our food. So what did I end up cooking uh, in, in Osamis? So I took the young guide's words to heart. And so as they toured me around the province, I started picking up the best ingredients we could find around the province. So we started with some cornmeal. Okay? Cornmeal in uh, a lot of places in Visayas, including Osamis, is a rice substitute. So I picked some of that up from the Osamis city market. And then I picked up some fresh shrimp from Sapang Dalaga. And then we picked up some chica chica, which is a, a crunchy snack found in Clarin City. And then some fresh basil, literally two minutes away from where I was doing the cooking demo. Is this what a traditional arroz caldo looks like? Not really. But is this dish authentically Osamis? Hell yes. Is this dish unabashedly Filipino? Hell yes. Is this dish an authentic Filipino dish? Hell yes. Because authentic Filipino food uses Filipino flavor profiles and techniques, but it also uses local seasonal ingredients at the peak of their freshness. And authentic Filipino food always allows for adaptation and customization. Because authentic Filipino food is not following a pedantic list of procedures, of ingredients, of appearances. No, authentic Filipino food is food that showcases the best of the Filipino. We are gracious hosts and we are an adaptable people. Because after all, we are what we eat. Thank you. <laughs>